everyone, thanks so much for watching. In today's video, I'm gonna do this get ready with me look. On half my face, I used my most expensive makeup. And on the other half of my face, I used my cheapest makeup, my least expensive makeup. Can you guys tell which side is which? <laughs> Should I get in closer? <laughs> if you can tell, leave a comment down below before I move on because in a second you're gonna see me without any makeup on and we're gonna put all these products on. I can't tell looking up close a difference from side to side. And at the end of the video, I'll have the pricing difference so that you can see, but it turned out better than I even thought it was going to, to be honest. So let's get into it. Let's go back in time and put these products on my face. So when I was going through my makeup, I just thought this would be a fun idea, right? I do get ready with me all the time, but I thought this might be fun. So anyways, I went through this morning and I picked out in my collection all like a full face of expensive, inexpensive, well, you know, the most expensive, the least expensive makeup in my collection. And I tried to really keep them similar products because I'm going out for dinner, I don't wanna to have to wash my face, but I thought this would be a fun idea. So I have a whole basket here of stuff and I'm just gonna go through. And I think what I'll do is I'll put the prices up and then at the end, I'll put the final price up for the full face. So I thought it would be interesting to see, right? Interesting to see if we can get a similar look and how much cheaper we can do that for. So these are not dupes. Uh, well, maybe some of them are, I don't know. I, that's not what I was trying for. What I was going for was products that I thought would look similar, not necessarily full dupes for products. So for primer, and I know I've talked about this before. Okay, so I'm gonna do high end, low end. This is the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base, and it is the most expensive primer in my collection. Oh, I'm not gonna need that much. I'm just doing half my face. That's just gonna be tricky for me. <laughs> so I look how much I've used to this. Like this is, this is almost done. It's in my shop, my stash. I have very little left. And I will be sad when I've used this up because I love it. I've loved it for a lot of years. <laughs> okay, I have to remember, don't do the full face. I take this right up around my eyes. This is just a hydrating primer and I love it and I've loved it for a lot of years. Now, I don't think you need to spend this kind of money on a primer. Um, and certainly if you were gonna get it, you know, I, I've mentioned in another video about the Sephora sales coming. It's definitely the time to pick up products like that. If like me, you're on a bit of a beauty budget, right? Like trying not to spend too much, but it's just hydrating. It has a light lemony scent or citrusy scent, and I do find it very soothing to my very easily irritated skin. On the other side, I'm gonna go in with this product from Good Molecules. It's the Silicone Free Priming Moisturizer. I have talked many times about how similar these products are. Now this is not as thick, it's not as, maybe not quite as hydrating. It doesn't really have any sort of a scent, but I feel like if what you're after is a really good hydrating primer step this one is lovely and i think i want to say that bobby brown one is well I will, i'll have put prices up in editing but i think this is like 82 and this is like 12 or something so quite a big difference okay and then i'm actually going to double prime because i got this deluxe sample of the milk hydro grip primer um, in a recent sephora order i placed and these two are so similar. So this is the Power Grip Primer from e.l.f. Now I have tried this Milk Makeup one before and I don't really care for it. I, I really like that e.l.f. one, but this one, I don't know. I've had samples of it before and I didn't like it, but we'll try it today. I know lots of people love it and lots of people say it's a dupe for the e.l.f. one. The e.l.f. one I absolutely love. And I'm not sure how much this Milk one is full price, but I guarantee you the e.l.f. one is cheaper. Although Elf stuff I feel like is slowly creeping up. I feel like it used to be cheaper than it is. Okay, they are an almost identical like color, consistency. What I find with the Elf one is I don't really need longevity out of my makeup. One, I'm not wearing my makeup for like a 12 hour day. And if I am wearing it for a long time, I don't really care if at the end of the day while I'm watching TV, my makeup doesn't look good. But this e.l.f. one, what it does do is it really smooths out my skin and just makes my skin look smoother. Okay, 
So I have talked about these before. So on the high end side, I'm gonna use the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Foundation. I love this, like look it. I'm almost through that product. And then on this side, from the Ordinary, I'm gonna use the Serum Foundation. This one you do need to shake a little bit. So let's put out a little bit for the Charlotte Tilbury side. I will link as many of these products as I can down below. Sometimes when I go to link, I just, I run out of space. You're only allowed so much in that description box, but I'll try to link as many as I can. And then I'm just gonna use a sponge. I'm gonna use the same sponge on both sides. So let's blend this out and then I'll go in with the Ordinary Foundation on the other side. So these products, I think I did a dupes video actually. If I did, I'll link that. It was probably a while ago now, but I did put these products kind of head to head. They're not the same consistency at all when you're putting them on. Like that Charlotte Tilbury foundation is quite thick. It's got quite a thick consistency. Probably does offer a little bit more coverage. I guess we'll see. But I feel like the effect on my skin once they've been applied is very, very similar. Okay, let's go in with this one from The Ordinary. You can see, like it's, it's serum-y, it's watery. It is one of my favorites. Like I have loved this foundation since they launched it, which I don't know when they launched it, but I, over a year at this point. I, I did talk about it all the time when it first launched because I feel like it's, I think their prices have gone up and I wanna say it's maybe $8 now, but one of my favorite foundations like ever, and certainly at that price point, I don't think you can find anything that's going to even come close. And I would say in my collection, that Charlotte Tilbury one is probably one of my, if not my most expensive, it would be close. This is definitely lighter than the Charlotte Tilbury side, but I think you can see this is dewy. They're both very dewy. Probably, well, I want to say maybe I see a little bit more on the Charlotte Tilbury side. However, very, very similar. Very interesting. When I look up close in my mirror, I think I almost get more coverage from the ordinary one. I did use different, different sides of the sponge. Definitely the Charlotte Tilbury one is a deeper shade. So that's going to make a difference on how these look, but I bet you with all my makeup on, you won't even really know that. So let's get those blended in. I don't know. That's pretty similar. Okay, let's go in with concealer. Now on my high end, I think the most expensive concealer in my collection, well, actually it would be the Tent Idol from Lancome, but it's too deep a shade for me to use as a concealer. I've been using it as an all over foundation. So next to that is this one from LYS. And this is the Triple Fix Full Coverage Brightening Concealer. And I think even this one is gonna be deeper than the cheapest one in my collection, which is this one from The Ordinary. I've loved this a long time. However, I did recently repurchase this and normally I wear shade 1.2N and it had been out of stock forever. And so this is 1.1N and so I feel like this is gonna be drastically lighter. Oh, it is. Well, we might have to correct that a little bit. <laughs> That's quite the difference. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna blend this ordinary side first. The ordinary one is very thick, which is funny because that serum foundation is so watery and so thin. And then this concealer is just probably also the thickest in my collection. I do have some eye irritation. I've got pretty, pretty bad eczema around this eye right now, so I apologize if that's distracting and you can see it. I'm definitely, I tried to really moisturize before doing this, but I'm definitely have got some crusty bits there. But you can see, like, that is a beautiful concealer. Absolutely beautiful. The one from LYS is thinner, and I don't think it offers as much coverage as that one from The Ordinary, but it's growing on me. When I first got it, I thought, oh, I don't know if I'm going to love this. And I don't love it, but I do like it, and I do think it is nice but it's definitely taken some time for me to get to that point. It's so funny, those were such drastically different shades, but <laughs> can you tell? I don't know that I can tell. Okay, so for cream bronzer, which is what I'm gonna go in with next, the most expensive one in my collection is this one from Fenty, and it's the Cheeks Out, I think it's called, yeah. And I have it in Butter Biscuit, and I, this, I think these are $44. So again, I'm just trying to find clean spots on my 
on my sponge. I'm trying really hard not to mix up the sides. <laughs> it's very tricky. This is a beautiful cream bronzer. I really, really like this one. It's, it's easy to blend. It's a nice formula. This shade for me is really nice and soft. You know, I am quite fair, so sometimes it can be a bit tricky. This, this is very easy for me. And just like that, kind of done. And then the cheapest bron cream bronzer I have is the Putty Bronzer from e.l.f. And I think I have this in tan lines. Yeah, in tan lines. So my biggest complaint about this is just this little tiny compact. It's so hard to get in there. I don't reach for it as much as I should because I have you know, so many cream bronzers, but there's nothing wrong with this formula. It's really nice. But the difference in price is, I, you know, these putty bronzers would be under $10. And again, that Fenty one, I think was 44. I did look up some prices, but I didn't look up everything. Okay, for cream blush. Now the most expensive one in my collection for cream blush, and I did actually go on Sephora and look up prices. It's this one from Lila B. It's so tiny. <laughs> it actually, is even a little bit smaller than the container with the e.l.f. putty blush, which is what I'm going to compare it to. So this is from Lila B and it's the Be Sassy Divine Duo Lip and Cheek and I didn't pay full price for this. I got this in a boxy pop-up sale and I do like it. It's just not my favorite cream blush. It just isn't and I think these are $59. This is not a mini. This is the full size. So I'm gonna do that on my high-end side. I didn't really want to use this one because that shade is not my favorite. However, it was so much more expensive than anything else in my collection. <laughs> so we're gonna do it, here we go. Okay, I'm gonna try to find a spot where I don't have anything <laughs> and blend that out a little bit. It definitely packs a punch. It's quite a vibrant pink color. It's pretty, like there's nothing wrong with it but I'm gonna go on the other side with the e.l.f. Putty Blush. I would like to try one of the new ones because I know there is like some dewier ones. I would be curious to see if I like that. So these shades are not the same, but I'm hoping, you know, kind of diffused out on the cheeks. Oh yeah, I think it's gonna be fine. Okay, stop it. 59 or what are, what are the e.l.f. ones, eight? <laughs> no, you can't. You can't even tell. You can't even tell that those are not the same shades. They're so different, but they look the same. Next, I'm going to go in with a little bit of pressed powder, and the most expensive pressed powder I own is this one from Charlotte Tilbury. I love this. This this is magic, this pressed powder. Honestly, if this is in your budget, it's gorgeous. It does something very magical on my face. So I'm going to go in on one side with that, just, just lightly. It's tricky. Mostly where I need to go is in the center of my face, but it's tricky to <laughs> not cross the line. <laughs> okay, and then my cheapest pressed powder is e.l.f. I fear a lot of these products are e.l.f., but I mean, that's just the truth in my collection. You know, I like e.l.f. products, so quite a few of my cheapest products are e.l.f. products. Not everything is e.l.f., but a few of them for sure. Okay, let's try to do the other side here. I'm gonna look up close and see how we're doing. Wow. Up close, I can't tell at all. Okay, what should we go in with next? Let's top our blush, because I do usually do that for cream blush. On my high-end side, my most expensive powder blush is this one from Patrick Ta, and it's the Monochrome Moment in She's Seductive. And then on the low end, I have this one from Sugar, and it is the Contour de Force Mini Blush. I don't know if this is a full size or a mini, but I think it might be the full size. I got this, I wanna say, in a BoxyCharm box or something, but for sure, I don't have a lot of inexpensive blushes. Most of my blushes actually are from Sephora, but I thought these two, this, this for sure is my most expensive, and I think this is my cheapest, and I think they're pretty close in shade. So let's just build that a little bit there. And then I just kind of blew the brush off, and I'm gonna go in with this cheaper one. Hmm. Yeah, very similar. Okay, let's see. Oh, the highlighter is a good one. So this highlighter is from Givenchy, and this is the 
Prism Libra highlighter and this one was limited edition. I don't think you can get it anymore, but in my collection, this is by far my most expensive highlighter and I want to say this was $70 when you could get it. There are other Prism Libra powders that come like this. So it's the four chamber and there's two different shades in there. Um, so I'll link one of those down below in case you're curious. I love this. I love this highlighter. It's one of my favorites, but I have this one from Rimmel in the shade Candlelight, just the highlight, and they're very similar. <laughs> so let's put these to the test side by side. Try not to take all that because I fear that's a bit too much. I'm just trying to do a pretty light dusting of that. Okay, and then let's go in with this Rimmel one. Very pretty, very subtle, yeah, very nice. Let's do some eyeshadow. Now I am excited to put these side by side. So on my higher end side is the Charlotte Tilbury Eyes to Mesmerize in Oyster Pearl. This is my favorite. Look at that. Look how much of that I've used. I love this. It is, if I could only have one, it would most likely be this one. And it's probably, it, well, it is my most expensive cream shadow, although the hourglass one might have been more, but I grabbed this one because I have this one from Bird's Bees that I just talked about in the faves and fails. They're not the same consistency. So the Charlotte Tilbury one is whipped and creamy and lovely, but I have really been enjoying this one from Bird's Bees and it is the Color Nurture Cream Eyeshadow in Honey Caramel. I'm hoping they're close enough that on the eyes, it'll be very similar okay i'm gonna take a flat brush now because i have nails i do almost always put both of these products on with the brush i just find it hard to get my fingers in there okay so this is the charlotte tilbury eyes to mesmerize in oyster pearl it's just so easy it goes on like that i take a fluffy brush blend out the edges a little bit diffuse it out and done how easy is that I love that product. Okay, so on the other side of the brush, I'm gonna go in now to the Burt's Bees one. The Burt's Bees one, like I said, is not the same consistency. And I think even mine might be a little dried out. It is a cream shadow, but it's a pretty dense cream shadow. I hope this doesn't look crazy. Again, I am going out for dinner. <laughs> It'd be nice not to have to wash my face. I don't really have time. What do we think? I'm gonna get up close and look in the mirror. Before I look too close, I do wanna take a little bit and run it on the lower lash line here as well. This this eye, my eczema is so bad right now. It's just, <laughs> it's a crusty mess, <laughs> especially down around here. So maybe putting some eyeshadow down there will help disguise that a little bit. Eyes to mesmerize on this side. Okay, I'm gonna get in close and look here. Uh, those might actually be full dupes, you guys. I can't tell up close which is which. Again, they don't feel the same in the pot, but on my eyes, <laughs> my whole face. Actually, I can't tell. I can't tell at all. Okay, let's get in with what now? Brows. Let's get in with some brows. So I have this one from Patrick Ta for my higher end side, and it is the Shaping Wax. And then I have this e.l.f. one that is the brow lift. I think the brow lift is more like a gel or pomade maybe. And this one from, from Patrick Ta is more like a wax or almost like a soap brow. But again, the effect in the brow. The Patrick Ta one I do have to spritz to activate. And then I'm gonna use a little brush and comb them up. I do love this Patrick Ta product like I just think it's fantastic but I do think I can get the same effect with the elf one okay so I'm gonna tip this the other way so I can use the bottom side of that spoolie now the trick with this elf one is to barely tap in there and then kind of smear it out on the lid a little bit because you need if you if I go in with too much of that product I get little white flakes you just need yeah, that might even be too much. I might be getting a little bit of flaking in there. You need the smallest amount of that product. I'm gonna take a clean spoolie and just run over it because I've got a little too much in there. 
I think the effect in the brow is identical, even though they're kind of a different product. Okay, and then just to fill in where I'm a little bit sparse on my high-end side, my most expensive uh, brow pencil is this one from Hourglass. I do really like this, but it's not worth the money. You know, I think you can get really inexpensive micro pencils from a lot of brands at the drugstore. There's no need to spend whatever the cost of this is. It's nice, it's really nice. It certainly isn't any better than stuff from the drugstore. And then on my lower end side, I'm gonna go in with this one from Billion Dollar Brows. This is, I think in my collection, I actually only have these two micro pencils. So I'm not sure that this one is a ton cheaper than that Hourglass one, but I suspect probably, like I wanna say this was maybe 10 or $15 for this. I did get this in a boxy pop-up sale and I do love this brow pencil. So if ever you're shopping the bo boxy pop-up sales and you see one of these, I think they were less than $5 in that boxy pop-up sale and definitely worth it. I really like this pencil, just so easy. Okay, for mascara now, this is what I have as my most expensive mascara right now, and it's from Bite. It's the Upswing Mascara. You can't get these anymore, or maybe you can at like Winners or something like that where they might be on discount on sale. If you can, grab it. I love this mascara. It's, I just, I'm so sad that this is no more. So I have this one and I have one on backup, and I wanna say these were, were these $30 full price? Something like that. They were very expensive, and then, for my low end side, I have this one from L'Oreal and it's the Voluminous, it's the original one. And the reason I have this is I am doing a mascara video. And <laughs> so I'm in the process of doing that. These are gonna be very similar. And so that's why I grabbed this. I do have open mascaras that are about the same price as this, but I wanted to use these together because I, I know it's gonna be a dupe. I know they're a dupe for each other. So I'm gonna go in with the Bite on the one side. I love this Bite mascara. Again, so sad that Bite is no more because this mascara is fantastic. And actually there were a few things from Bite that I liked, but definitely the mascara was my favorite thing. That's one coat, I got a little bit here, I gotta clean off, but that's one coat of that Bite Upswing mascara. I, I love that mascara. Like how quick and easy is that? It gives me volume like crazy. It gives me length. Oh guys, I love that mascara. Let's see how we do with the Voluminous. Now I will say this, that Bite one I have had open for a couple weeks or maybe even a month. So this one's brand new. So it's not gonna be as buildable, I don't think. I might have to go in with two coats to get the same effect. So this is the first mascara that I ever used, this L'Oreal Voluminous. And I probably used this, well I used this up until that Lash Paradise came out. And now I use the Lash Paradise when I don't have a bite that I'm using. And those are my two favorites. I love the Lash Paradise mascara, but it's way more money than this actually, because this uh, original Voluminous mascara was just under $7 at Walmart and the Lash Paradise was almost 15. So I don't think they're that different that there should be that much of a price difference. I remember this wand being bushier, but anyways, let me get a little closer. I haven't used this original Voluminous in a long time, years and years. Okay, there's one coat. So I am gonna go in and build up the voluminous side a little bit because clearly they are not the same. Pretty close, I think. <laughs> Pretty similar. Definitely the bite one was easier to use, but also it had been opened. Like I just opened that voluminous one up, right? And usually when you open up a mascara, it takes a couple weeks for it to sort of get to the perfect consistency. So I'm gonna go in with some setting spray. I only have um, inexpensive setting sprays right now. I don't have anything high end. So I'm just gonna go in with this one from the cream shop or creme shop and mist my whole face and then we'll do lips. For lips, now I feel like these are gonna be very similar looking on the lips, but I know from using them that they're not the same type of formula. So I have this one from Makeup by Mario. This is in Bronze Glow. I can't remember what these are called, but it's his like balm, his tinted balm. I absolutely love this product. It's hard to do half your lip. This feels so good on the lips. If you are looking for a glossy tinted balm type formula, this one is one of my favorites. Look at that shine from that product. 
you can even see it there just how shiny it is and glossy and balmy and it's like a lip gloss in a tube it's lovely this one from elf is the hydrating core lip shine it looks like that's got a little heart in it it's super cute it's not as glossy as the makeup by mario one but shade wise very similar not as glossy though and i prefer how the makeup by mario one feels on my lips and that makeup by mario one does tingle a little bit it's got some mint or something in it but for the difference in the cost of these products i'm not sure anyone would tell the difference <laughs> okay so here we go here's the finished face i'll put up the price here <laughs> for the high end side and the price here for the lower end side again this is my most expensive products and these are my least expensive products and can you tell i'm getting close You guys, I can't tell. I can't tell if I look close in my mirror. The foundations look the same. I'm getting the same amount of creasing and settling. Those blushes look the same. Oh, actually, you know what I will say? I think this cheek looks a little bit smoother in application. And maybe on this side, I'm seeing a little patchiness. That's, it would be subtle, but I think I do see that. The highlighter, I think this is a little bit just more than this side. Like I can see that shift and shimmer a little bit more on the high-end side. Brows look identical. I can see no difference in the brows. Mascara once it's on, same, same. <laughs> and let's see, concealer. I actually might be getting, oh no, I think they're kind of creasing the same. I have sort of the same amount of creasing. They look to be about the same amount of coverage too, so that's very similar. Lips look identical up close. The Makeup by Mario one has ever so slightly more shine and what else the eyeshadow i can't i can't tell i can't tell you guys when i'm looking up close i can't tell that i did not use the same products on both sides and i bet you the difference in cost is probably alarming is it i don't know i have to add it up and edit it after so there you go you guys there is half high half low what do you think did you enjoy this video it was fun to do i'm gonna go out for dinner like this i don't think anyone can tell like, I can't tell up close. That's nuts, you guys. That's crazy. Okay, so fun. I really enjoyed this video. I hope you guys did too. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, if you would subscribe, that would be amazing. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye, everyone.